right, May 21st, 2011 is less than a week away. And predictably, nobody took me up on my challenge to sign ownership of their car over to me, effective May 22nd, stamped by a notary, if they thought this was really going to happen. Quite frankly, Allison Warden of WeCanKnow.com and Harold Camping of Family Radio have both held on to enough of their personal assets to lead a comfortable life if it turns out that the rapture doesn't really occur. In fact, most of the money they used to advertise this on billboards came from donations from their congregation. So what I'm going to talk about today is how exactly do you handle it if you've been telling people the 21st is the rapture and it turns out not to be. Quite frankly, just simply admit that you were wrong. There's no shame in it. We've all been wrong many times in our life. All it means is that you followed the wrong leader. We all do it. There are a lot of different leaders in Christianity. There are a lot of different types of Christianity. A lot of them conflict with each other, and they can't all be right. So all it means is that you guessed wrong. Try again. Um, but the thing about leadership is that you cannot be a leader without the support of your team. So if you're on a team that has a bad leader, it's up to you to withdraw your support from that leader and find a different one. Basically, make a deal with yourself that if this was not the rapture, I'm not saying you should give up Christianity, you know, stay a Christian, but just find a better church. Just find a church that wasn't promoting this May 21st rapture prophecy. I also want to talk a little bit about belief and the conditions under which we believe. You see, if you're buying a car, do you only take the salesperson at their word? Or you read, do you read as many different reviews about that car as possible to give yourself a fuller view of that car? You know, you want to read some negative reviews and some positive reviews. You want to weigh them against each other. You do the same thing when you're picking your favorite politician, right? You don't take any politician at their word, I hope. I hope not. I certainly don't. You want, to, um, you want to listen to their critics and then listen to them, weigh one side against the other, and make your own decision. Um, with religion, I notice a lot of people don't do that. So we can admit that if you believed that May 21st was going to be the rapture, and it wasn't, you need to be just a little bit more skeptical. I'm not saying you have to be like me and be a complete atheist, but just add a little skepticism to your view. What I would recommend is reading a book called Letter to a Christian Nation. This is by Sam Harris. It's a little over 100 pages long. It's a very fast read. It basically focuses on Christianity alone, and it's a, criti it's a criticism of it. It's a critic's view of why they are not a Christian. I'm not saying you have to believe every word of this book. I'm not saying you have to believe any of it. But at least read it so you can get a more complete picture. You'll learn a lot of stuff in this book that your priest didn't tell you about Christianity. Another great book I don't think gets enough, um, don't gets enough attention is Godless by Dan Barker. This guy was an evangelical preacher, spent most of his life as a preacher, and slowly went from one side of the fence to the other, and now he's one of America's most outspoken atheists. Um, one advantage I think this book has over a lot of the other atheist books is that it's very, very personal. Barker was a believer for most of his life, and now he's not. He has a view of this that, you know, Sam Harris and Richard Dawkins don't have. He was a believer. Now, there's always the God Delusion by Richard Dawkins. There's God is Not Great by Christopher Hitchens. Um, those focus more, it's more of a broad view of religion. Christian Nation, it reads fast, and it focuses only on Christianity. So again, I'm not saying you have to agree with it, but you should at least read it to help balance your view. Um, one note that I want to end this video on is that if you're a member of a church or the leader of a church that was not perpetuating the May 21st rapture myth, I think you should post your contact information right here in the comments bar of this video so that people looking for a better church can find you. I'm hoping this page is a, turns out to be a resource for people looking for better churches. Post your information here. If you know of a good church, encourage them to post their information here. If you're looking for a church that wasn't leading you the wrong way, I mean, okay, I'm an atheist. I don't agree with any of them. But we can all agree that this May 21st rapture myth can be used to at least weed some of the bad 
some of the bad preachers out of Christianity because I have a lot of Christian friends. We get along great, and one thing Christians and myself can agree on is that there are some crazies on both sides of this fence, okay? At least the May 21st rapture myth might help weed out a few crazy leaders from the Christian side. So, that's my piece. Have a great day.